In this video, I will give you a very quick overview of a Kaleido business information model, what it contains, and how easy it is to create and change them. What you're looking at here is a very basic model that I created in about five minutes. And what it does is it tracks profitability by analyzing sales, cost of goods sold, and allocated costs. So these colored boxes represent um, facts or transactions that you're collecting in your operational systems. We also have several classes or dimensions, such as a client dimension, product dimension, a time dimension, and an organization dimension in the model. Now within each of these classes you have hierarchies. So you can see a time hierarchy where days roll up into months, into weeks, months into quarters, etc. In the product dimension you've got a saleable product, which we can analyze by product class and then by product group. We also have a second hierarchy with a saleable product uh, it rolls up to a product family and perhaps to a product manager. And then in the organization class, we're tracking sales by sales rep and the different ways that we want to aggregate that information. In this case, by what region they sell in and also by what department they are in in the company. Now this is an interesting one because you see the looped arrow on the uh, department class. This indicates that the data there may be several levels of departments that report to other departments. But we don't need to model that explicitly. We only need to know that that case exists in the, in the information about our departments. Uh, the client dimension has some interesting things going on in it too. What this is telling me is we have two types of client. We have an individual client and a corporate client. It also says that we track individual clients by their age group, their gender, and their occupation, but we're tracking corporate clients by their industry. Now because these arrows connect directly to these boxes, creating an association, it means we don't track corporate clients by age group, because that doesn't make any sense. However, notice credit rating. Uh, credit rating is associated with the whole client group. This means that credit rating applies to both individual clients and corporate clients. So individual and corporate clients are effectively inheriting this association with credit rating. They're also inheriting the naming schemes and attributes of the client because they're in the same group. So in this example, client is a supertype and individual and corporate clients are subtypes. And supporting these concept of supertyping and subtyping is really powerful in, in setting up and maintaining these models. So that's the structure of our model. Now the colored lines coming out of the transactions, these are also associations. And what this tells me is we're tracking gross sales by each of these classes and at the lowest level of granularity. So we're selling saleable products by day to a client, again an individual or a corporate client, and that's sold by a sales rep. Uh, we're also tracking cost of goods sold by product and we're tracking allocated costs by client. So for the business user, what this tells them is that any combination of the boxes that are linked together will be a view that they'll be able to get for analysis. So at a glance, it's really simple to see what it is that they can do. Another thing you'll notice is that everything is written in English. There are no underscores, there are vowels, the words are all completely spelled out. So a non-technical person can really understand this at a glance. Also, making the changes to this model are really simple because creating this is all done with a mouse. So let's look at a more complex model. Now this one has many more transactions. You see the colored boxes in the middle and then around the perimeter uh, we have uh, various classes. Also, you'll note that the data is not all coming in at the same granularity. So uh, what I'll do to make this easier to see is I'm going to remove the transaction associations. I'm going to zoom in and uh, we'll take a look at gross sales and sales projections. So uh, you can see that by I turning on those associations individually, I can better read the model. Uh, now we're tracking gross sales at the day level, but we're forecasting sales, our projections, at the quarter level. But as days roll up to quarters, um, we'll be able to compare actual sales, actual gross sales, uh, to the forecast sales by quarter. And we'll also be able to see that at the employee level, the field employee level.
Now, one of the things you get from this business model approach to building the warehouse is flexibility and agility to respond to change. So let's assume for a moment that our company is adding a new uh, sales channel or sales client. Um, so we're going to sell to resellers in addition to directly to individuals and corporations. So this is going to require a change to the model. So what I'll do is I'm going to draw a new box using mouse movements and I'm going to create a class called a reseller. And that reseller is going to be part of our client group. So I'll just drag and drop them in there. We're also going to want to uh, analyze resellers by what type of reseller they are. So I'm going to create a class called a reseller type. And I'm going to add that as an association between resellers and reseller types to our client, our client group. Now by adding a reseller to the client subgroup, the resellers will inherit the requirement that they have to have a credit rating uh, and, and uh, that because that's already been defined for the group. So I have nothing special or extra to configure or maintain. Now it's also likely that we're going to track reseller sales uh, in a different system. So I'm going to add a new, um, uh, a new transaction called reseller sales to the uh, revenue, sales revenue group. Reseller sales. And we're going to um, associate it with resellers, with products that we sell, with a journal entry. We're going to get those sales at the daily level. And we're probably not going to get this at the employee level. We're going to associate this, however, with uh, the corporation. So I'll just drag a line here between reseller sales and the corporation level of our organization dimension. So this gives you a simple idea uh, of how it is easy and fast to create and maintain these business information models. Now this may look like it is just a fancy way of building a picture, but the real value comes from what we do with the model. When we deploy the model, Kaleido reads it in and of course creates the staging tables, the loading tables, the conform dimensions and the MART tables, but the really exciting part is we automatically create the load routines to enforce the rules in the model, as well as automatically create all the routines to operationally develop and maintain the warehouse. This is a huge resource, effort, and time saver. It's part of what makes Kaleido Warehouse so agile to keep pace with your business.